This is Tracy's World. I'm Tracy. My friends call me Willie. And like I always say, if you my friend, you can call me Willie too. Look, check this out. I am on my way to... It's a showcase for Christian authors. And I have invited my mother to go. So we're going to hang out tonight. It has it's got uh, authors. There's food involved. I do know. Uh, we had to pay for our tickets. It wasn't free. So, um, and it was a dress up. Now, you know, I don't dress up. I'm kind of casual. Like, so anyway... I want you guys come on go with me and my mother I couldn't bring Colleen her knees are really bothering her so And they want to know, where are you? 
Well, you, you got my answer. I know somebody going through what I'm going through. But you know that devil wants to make you think that you're the only one going through it. You're the only one that's messed up. You're the only one that's embarrassed. All this other stuff. That's a lie. There's nothing new under the sun. Ain't nothing new. We, we've all gone through something. We, we all have something to be embarrassed about. So arms are like, what? Let's live. Let's live. Okay. I'm all over the place. <laughs> we I want to talk about being that we are the answer. And I'm reminded of uh, the discord, discourse of Job. Y'all y'all know the story about Job. And how all that he went through, you know, was trying to figure it out, he had his friends talking, and you know, they were all trying to get to the bottom, you know, Job must have sinned and all this other stuff. And Job trying to figure out, you know, I did everything right. And they just went on and on and on and on. And, on. and so it comes back up in Job the 38th chapter. In Job 38, it, from Job 38 to Job 41, four chapters, is when God steps in. He hears this discourse about all of what's going on. They're trying to figure it out. You know, sometimes we think we have the answer in that kind of situation because we want to give a reason why something has happened. You know, well, this happened to me because, well, no. <laughs> you need to be okay in saying, I really don't know. Yeah. Instead of being all knowing. Just don't know. So anyway, so they had this conversation and so, I think God heard enough of it, so he steps in in Job 38 through 41. And so he, he comes in and he hears them trying to figure this stuff out. I said, wait a minute, hold up. Let me step in, let me clear stuff up because y'all got some misconceptions mm -hmm. and y'all think y'all know everything. You come to all these great conclusions. And all y'all wrong. <laughs> all y'all wrong. And he starts out in Job 38, 4, and he says, where were you? when I laid the earth's foundation. <laughs> then you shut everybody down. Yeah. And then you read those chapters, and you know, God said, where were you when I put the stars up in the universe and, 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 and uh, made the animals and all this other stuff? I mean, God is like, swoop, just shut everybody down. And so at the end of all of this, Joe said, you know, Lord, I heard about you, but now I really know you. You know, you're saying some stuff here. That I hadn't even considered. I thought I knew, I had a handle on, but I really didn't. So what I'm saying is that sometimes we think that we have the answers to everything, but we know who does have the answer to everything, and that is God. But there is an answer yes. that God has in you, that he will speak that truth through you. And he's not going to say it through any other entity or anything else. It's only going to come through you. Yeah. You are God's answer in the earth. I know I'm going to sound repetitious. I don't care. I'm not here. But I just want you to get one thought that you are the answer. You got an answer in you. You got wisdom in you. Amen. You, you, you got something in you that can help somebody else. It, it may not have the best outcome, but it will help people at that in-between gap in their yeah. life. Like, like how, how do you handle oppression and depression? Well, you know, I, I don't know how all that works, but you may tell them, you know what? All I know is I wake up every morning and I just lay hands on my head. And I say, you know, God, my thoughts are your thoughts. And then I'm pulling down these vain imaginations. And I'm going to look, I'm going to think on things that are above and not beneath. I'm going to make these affirmations so you're helping somebody else to get over depression. Yeah. Yeah. As a man thinking, so is he. So how yeah. are we thinking? He tells us, yes. think on things that's above. Uh -huh. Not on all of this earthly stuff that brings yeah. on depression. Yeah. Not this stuff that happened in your past when God says, look, all things are become new. You are a new creature. Yeah. Behold, look, all yeah. things are become new. Yeah. Become is a process. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. You ain't gonna get it overnight. It's becoming new. Yes. Everything in your life becomes new. Each juncture of your life, each stage of your life, you learn a little bit more about God than what you knew before. Yeah. What I know about God now is totally different yeah. from what I knew about him 10, 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. 
Why? Because I have grown in some things. I have experienced him. Experienced him in ways that I can't even imagine that I would have experienced him. A lot of people say, yeah, I trust God. Well, yeah, as long as you're working, you got your job, you got your check, everything, you get your social security. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's good. You're good, healthy, strong. Well, that's going to come a day. Yeah. Come on. When we preach this thing, we're going to have to live it. Yeah. I can break down trusting God all day long. I'll give you a whole series of teachings. But until I have experienced it, yeah. it is Okay, we get that. We got your one, two, three points. That's good for us. But we want to know how you work it out. What did you do when nothing came in? Did you freak out? Come on. Did you say, oh, Lord, I know you're going to make a way. You lie. <laughs> you had a panic attack. Yeah. So they told you that bill was due, uh -oh. and you didn't have the money, or uh -oh. so they threatened to do, take your car, house, whatever it was. Uh -oh. When you got fired, uh -oh. when they downsized your job, uh -oh. when you didn't have this, when you couldn't work anymore because of your sickness and all this other stuff going uh -oh. in your life, what, what did you do? Uh -oh. Well, we trusted God. In the beginning you did. Uh -oh. You wanted to. Uh -oh. Well, I want to know the real deal. Uh -oh. <laughs> What, 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 what was your answer yes. when, when you woke up every day nervous mm -hmm. that you didn't have enough to make it? Uh -huh. But what was your answer to life? What did you do? How did yes. you feel? Yes. How did you feel? I was a wreck. Just tell me you were a wreck. I said, but the peace of God that passes all understanding settled me. Hallelujah. I could have been on the verge of having a heart attack. Worried about what I didn't have and what I should have had and, and, and how it's going to be taken away from me and, and everything that I knew that was working well is not working anymore. It was a peace of God that got in my heart and my mind. Yes. I didn't snap. I didn't have to take a pill. I didn't have to go to the doctor and say, give me something to calm my nerves down. No. It was God. Yeah. 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 It says, go, settle down. Yeah. I got this. Yeah. I got this covered. And then uh, sometimes that didn't quite get it. Because we want to know, how you going to do it? How you going to do this, God? Because they say, this is what they telling me. How you going to work that? I don't see how you do it. It ain't working. Some people want to know, what did you do with this thing? I know when people are great faith. Honey, your faith ain't always there all the time. You have moments. Amen. And God knows we have moments. But God knows also that, okay, you can have your moment. I need you to get it together. I can have my moments. It's okay. You cry, but I um, need to wipe your tears off. <laughs> this is just for a moment. Call your moment and my moment. Is too good a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Our moments are not coinciding. Because <laughs> what you call a moment is just like a second. <laughs> you just think I'm just going to bounce out. <laughs> oh, we're good. <laughs> but I'm so glad I serve a God that understands what my moment is. That I can tell somebody after. What a moment is, and how we get to a place where God works your moment out, and then you do get on His page. For so long, I was not on the page of God. I go preaching and teaching. I wasn't really good. Come on, we know a lot, but we ain't living a lot. You got the letter of the word, but do you have the spirit? Mm -hmm. Not 
with the spirit of the word? Do you have the experience? Have you experienced that? We want to go to higher heights and deeper depths. Do you know what it takes to go to a higher height in God? I'm not talking about this stuff, new level, new devil stuff. <laughs> we, we just throw stuff, we just throw stuff. <laughs> But I wanted to know how many of them wanted to get it for themselves. I said, well, no. She said, yeah. She said, we've been doing it. We've been discussing it. And I said, oh, my God. I said, Lord, look at you. Had I not been obedient and putting this down, it would have never got there. You know what I'm saying? And I have to say that so you can see that I am no better than you. And you're no better than me. It's the little that you do. What it said, little in a master's hand becomes much. I yeah. probably quote it all wrong, but y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you put it in his hands, and he does great things with it. Mm -hmm. And so the book has gone places that I never imagined it would go. Yeah. It's gone to Africa. Mm -hmm. It's gone to so many places. I said, what? What is going on? That was that, that, you know, and I'm looking at just people locally, mm -hmm. you know, as we say, supporting. But well, you know what, let's, let's, okay. let's just handle that support part. Because even you being here tonight, you're not just supporting Bishop Sabatino. You are here because of your destiny. You are here because of your journey. You are here because of your purpose in life. You're not just supporting. You just didn't spend your money just to support. Okay? He could have had, you know, and said, well, I'm just collecting money for, I don't know, whatever it did. And y'all could have contributed to that. You didn't have to come out. You didn't have to get dressed. You didn't have to travel all this distance. But you're here, you're invested in your life. Mm -hmm. This money that you spent tonight, it wasn't for the meal. Amen. You invested in your life. You came with an expectation of God, say something to me that's going to get me going. Because I feel like I'm stuck. I feel like I have no reason, I have no purpose. I'm getting older and I have not fulfilled anything that you told me to do. God, I need you to say something to me. What I'm telling you tonight, you are the answer. Yeah. Now, I have the answer. I don't care what your answer is. There's a problem out there. You've got the solution. You've got the solution. If no more than tell us, them, give us somebody a smile. You a solution to a frowned up face. Yeah. <laughs> can't nobody smile like you do. I can't duplicate your smile. You can't duplicate mine. I can't tell it like you do. And don't be ashamed of what you went through. Stop making people think that you just, this is awesome being that just popped on planet Earth and everything is just great and wonderful. And you too embarrassed to talk about what went on in your life. That's what this generation needs to know. Because we have projected that bad image and making them think that we have been like this all of our lives. And we want them to know something that we haven't even attained to. And they want to know, well, D, 
did you ever like somebody else, mama? And so, you know, they're having this dialogue and they're talking about this thing. 
And so at the end of this, they say how devastating it was. It tore up their emotions, everything. It just knocked them all, just tore them up. And I had my grandson and my granddaughter. She's a teenager. She's, she was 17, 16 when this was done. And my grandson was 21. I wanted to hear their interpretation of it. So I had them to read it, read the manuscript. And I said, well, tell me what you think. And they said, oh my goodness. They said, this is what's going on in my generation right now. Because they don't know how to distinguish between relationships. They think that everything is great and good, but then when it happens, they just fall out, get me friends, don't want to talk to nobody. And, and our whole point was that you don't have to allow these things to throw you out of the arena of life. Yeah. That it happens to all of us. But if we can learn some lessons from it, life is a lesson learned. You learn something from it, and hopefully you're going to get back up. You're going to love again. You, you, you're going you're gonna to reach out again because that's who we are. But now you're going to do it with some wisdom, you know, some understanding. Yeah. Like, I don't let love do to me what it did to me the last time. Right. Now, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're going to get along and we're going to have a good relationship and we're going to jerk me around. <laughs> There's no control here. Amen. It's a mutual thing here. It's not going to be one over the other. So the book talks about that and then it gives some words of wisdom afterwards. And then it gives space in the book that says, what did you learn from this? What, what were your thoughts? What is your takeaway? How, how did this help? How is this helping you? And so I wanted to leave something that was going to really, really help them. And I, I didn't want people to just keep living life and just get stuck in depression and, 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 and all this other stuff. I did another one on sick and well. These two robots, you know, you, you young, invincible, don't nothing hurt you. Hang out all day, sleep. Whenever you want to sleep, don't take care of yourself. And all of a sudden, as they kept walking down this road, they started experiencing physical problems, mm -hmm. headaches. They couldn't keep food on their stomach. All sorts of stuff kept coming up. But that's because a lot of times, young people don't take care of themselves. Well, sometimes older people don't eat. Right? <laughs> and he says, I have walked that long road to freedom. I have tried not to falter. I have made missteps along the way. But I have discovered the secret that after climbing a great hill, only one finds that there are many more hills to climb. I have taken a moment here to rest, to steal a view of the glorious vista that surrounds me, to look back on the distance I have come. But I can only rest for a moment, for with freedom comes responsibilities. And I dare not linger, for my long walk is not end it. Mm -hmm. It becomes real. It's not just a good idea to capture the things of our life and put them out there for others. It's not because somebody said you should write a book. It's not because somebody else wrote a book and you liked it and thought I can do that. It's because God calls us to write for him. It may not be a testimony or a Bible study. It might be a book on humor. It might be a poetry book. It might be historical. Some of the things that you've experienced in your family. It could be anything. A children's book, a picture book. And oftentimes we find out there are still people that's leading while they're bleeding. And though they're leading, they're, they're still wounded themselves and they wind up bleeding on innocent people. And what happens, they begin to recycle people after their own kind. And then what you have is a bunch of people going from church to church that's dealing with wounds and hurts. But I believe that in this season, God is raising up people that's no longer going to be hurt. But these are going to be people that God is going to raise up with a voice to say, you know what? I've been through hell and high water, but I'm still here. I survived the storm. I Suicide, but thank God that he rested. That listen, watch this. You don't have to look back at your past and allow people to label you by your shame because God does not call you by your shame, but he calls you by your name. Listen, what the devil meant for your evil, God has a way of turning.
turning that thing around and your pain can become your purpose. Amen. We all can have a coming out party. I've been through something. I've been through the muck and the mire. I've been, listen, I've been criticized, I've been scandalized, I've been abused. Listen, my fever self was dropped. Anybody know that story? Yeah. He was dropped at, he was dropped at five years old, was lame and both of them, his feet became lame. Why is it? But not only did his feet become lame, but the Bible says, Mephibosheth said, this five-year-old boy, though he grew up, he was laying in both feet. He was crippled, but he had a son. Isn't that amazing? He was crippled, but he had a son. And sometimes what we do, listen, we, 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 we have a pity party. Sometimes we feel sorry for ourselves because of what we've been through. Woe is me. But listen to this. No, listen, though he was laying at his feet, he there was a part of his life where he was not dysfunctional. He was able to still have a child. Are oh, you listening to what I'm saying today? Listen, in spite of all you've been through, saints of God, and all we go through in life, watch this, there was something that God is raising you up to do. So we got God has called you to do. My name is Josiah, and I approve this message. Yeah.